Good morning, everybody. It's good to see that you're more awake than me. <laughs> I, I do sleep on occasion, actually. I do love my coffee. Right. Uh, Chris Noring is my name. I was, uh, well, here yesterday, I believe, right? Yeah, I was. <laughs> uh, as Anna was saying, I have a big passion for OSS, and the main reason for that that the people who do OSS are really amazing people. I mean, most people, most of us, we just show up to work, right? We do our bit, then we go home. But these people start when everybody else go home, because they work for us with no pay. We need to remember that. So that's why I'm dedicating this keynote into a lot of awesome OSS projects that exist and the people behind it. So that's what this keynote is. So OSS, not all heroes wear capes. Because it's really true, right? So what do we know about OSS? Well, most of us are, are using some kind of libraries that have some kind of license. The most common license nowadays, I think, is the MIT license. And that's pretty much a, a, a free for all. I mean, we can use this without being worried. If you look at the Wikipedia definition, it says that, aha, uh -huh, okay, OSS, that's something that uh, uh, allows us to study, change, and distribute software. And uh, yeah, it's very easy to think that everything is a well organized project in OSS. That's not really the case. It's super easy to think that everyone's like the Angular team or everyone's like RxJS or NGRX. It's a team of people, they have rules and regulation, and it works really well. In fact, a lot of OSS projects is just one developer, one awesome person that just shares with the world. And they need your help with PRs and just being nice. So how do we use it? Well, back in the old days, at least me used to copy whatever software I found somewhere on the web, put that in a, a script file and kind of reference that thing. Nowadays, we got NPM or Yarn or whatever it is. It's super quick or we might have a CDN link, or we have nothing, because it's actually part of the tools that we're already using. A lot of tools have a lot of OSS in them, and we don't know about it. It has an enormous impact on our work, for good and for bad. How many people here remember LeftPad? That was painful, right? And that's things that can happen. And sure, it brought negativity, but it wasn't really about OSS at the end of the day. But it just shows us that OSS libraries can be really, really small. I mean, left pad, what was that? Like one line of code? <laughs> Still very impactful. Do you recognize these logos? You should, right? Anyone knows what the green one is? Basil, good. Angular conference. <laughs> the other one, this one, Nest. How many uses Nest? You love it, right? It's awesome. It's like Angular on the back end. So if you haven't tried Nest, you should try it. Got services, dependency injection, a lot of really nice things. We got RxJS in there, and of course we got Angular Fire and other really awesome projects. Now, RxJS, that's one of those libraries that we really can't live without, right? It's su such an integral part of Angular. Sure, we might think it's just HTTP. How many here think it's just HTTP in Angular? Yeah, you, you kind of know, because you're dealing with forms, routing, and a lot of other things. Observables in RxJS is everywhere. But I have to admit, first time I, I used RxJS, it was like a big rewrite of my brain, right? Because we all came from AngularJS, most of us. We used promises, and then suddenly there was this weird thing. It kind of looked like a promise, but it was so different. And we saw talks yesterday from Jan and Michael about subjects and a lot of really advanced and really cool, useful patterns. So RxJS is here to stay. Reactive programming is here to stay as well. And Nest. We mentioned Nest already, but it's super, super cool. For those of you who have, haven't used it, it's living on top of Express, which is a web framework for Node.js. With that said, it's very opinionated, which means it has controllers, it has services, and it makes building an API a real joy, because it has TypeScript as well. 
Who loves TypeScript? All right, all right. So as I said, it has dependency injection, but there's way more. We have Swagger support. Who uses Swagger? Or some kind of documentation for your API. That's really, really awesome and super easy to set up in NestJS. So I'm very, very happy about the NestJS team and their hard work there. And just uh, working with GraphQL. How many, how many uses GraphQL? I mean, the support in Nest is outstanding. It just takes you a few minutes and you're up and running. And you got ORM support and a lot of other things. So that framework, for me at least, is the future of backends. And of course, you can share code between your project. So you can share the same code between your front end and your back end. And of course, state management. Now I'm just singling out NGRX here, but there are so many different versions here of state management that we can use for Angular, like Akita, NGXS, and a lot of other ones. I just mentioned one. So how many uses some kind of, of, of state management of the ones I mentioned? It's kind of hard to write an Angular application when it gets big if you don't have some kind of, of, of state management already. And the team behind NGRX are really, really awesome people. So you should really go to internet and, and Twitter and, and just give a good shout out to Brandon and all the other stuff, um, people in that project. I believe Brandon may might have left, but anyway. Next topic, Firebase. That's the thing that we can use to, to prototype, but also build production apps. But the reason Firebase is so easy to use for us as Angular developers is because of Angular Fire, the library on top of it. But it, thanks to Angular Fire, we can actually use observables, which is you know what we're using all the time anyway with, with the backend HTTP. How many uses Angular Fire? Few hands. Real-time applications have never been so easy, but of course it's, it's very easy to just think that it's a, a reactive database and that's all there is to Firebase, but there's so much more, so many more services. So go check out uh, Firebase uh, as well. NX, how many have heard of NX? You've heard of Narval, right? Victor Savkin, Jeff Cross, or is it Mike? I'm not sure, right? Now I'm talking about the beard guy, right? Uh, NX has a lot of extensions that allows you to work with monorepos, right? So it's super easy to add stuff like uh, TypeScript, Cypress, Jest. It's, it's made for the enterprise. So if you've got a big Angular applications, I, I would really say go have a look at the NX dev documentation site and see what it can, uh, can do for you, because it's a really, really great set of uh, libraries. How many here uses the cloud in some form? And the rest of you, you use some kind of basement to host your app, or no? Yeah, sorry, I, that, that was a bit uh, mean. But what I'm trying to say that in 2019, we kind of use some kind of hosting solution. And using the cloud should be simple. We shouldn't have to know about all the different artifacts in the cloud. We just want to press deploy and forget about it, right? So we have uh, ng deploy, we have uh, uh, deployment to Firebase, we have deployment to Netlify and Site. Are there more? I think there are four really great ones. Super easy to use, just add the schematic that you need and ng deploy. And you're up and running in like two minutes. Again, this is about you not having to know all the internals of what goes on in the cloud, because frankly, you might care or you might not care. It should be easy, right? And then we have the chapter of mobile apps. How many creates mobile apps here? How many uses Ionic? Let's make uh, Jeff happy, right? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, of course, there's also native script if you want to be closer to the metal. So we have two really great mobile frameworks at our disposal. And you know we are a bit spoiled that way in the Angular community. Now we come to another part. This is your part, actually, of how you can help. How many actively contribute to OSS? It's usually one, two, three hands. How many uses OSS? It's all of you, right? But I do understand you, because I mean, I, I, I used to be you, and I am still you, most of you, because frankly, we have a day job, right? And when we come home at night, we want to watch football or, or kind of, you know, 
something else. But the fact of the, of the matter is that a lot of things we do in our daily work wouldn't work without OSS. So maybe you don't have time for con code contributions, but you could convince your company to support these OSS projects, or you could do so yourself. There are great integrations like Patreon and uh, a lot of other nice buttons where you can just click and add to these projects. And frankly, this last one is the one that I want you to do. Start commenting on social media. When you find that you use a library and you really like it, reach out to the core contributors and just say thank you. It actually matters a lot for them. And the main reason it matters is that they get a lot of heat. They get a lot of negative comments on social media. They don't see all of your good comments. And that's a bit sad, right? All these really amazing people get negativity. Let's talk about contributing. There weren't a lot of hands that actually contributes. How many of you don't contribute because you don't know how? Few hands. You're in luck. I'm actually going to tell you how. But we, we all feel this way, right? Well, maybe not like uh, Sergey Boka here. He was actually super good, right? Six meters. Uh, I think that's what the bar is on. Point is, it feels like a high bar. We don't know where to start. Because of this, there are so many concepts. People just swing these concepts around, and we're like, oh, can I ever learn what, what they mean? Contributions, files, readmes, issues, forks, squash your commits. You might know some of these concepts in your everyday life, but you know, people who do OSS, they, they, they just talk this language, and you're like, oh, I don't know, I'm going to go play a game, right? But NGRX team and a lot of other OSS libraries out there have made it super easy for you to actually contribute. They have these pen icons here at the top right. You can just click that and go into the documentation straight away and say, I think we should add this, or here's a spelling error, and that's a great contribution. Just press this pen icon, and you're going to get this uh, edit field, and you can just change it to whatever you want. And it's going to raise a PR. It doesn't get any simpler than this, and it's going to impact each and every one in your community, including your daily life. But you might want to code, right? Maybe you don't want to contribute to docs, but you want to code. What then? Well, we start with this fork of, of the repo. So once we have a fork, we have a local copy of that repo. Could be Angular, could be RxJS, or some other repo. Then what? Well, then we do this command, git remote add upstream. So we have this connection between our local repo and, and the uh, remote one. And then we fetch all the changes from that remote repo to make sure that we're always on the latest and greatest. And then we uh, simply make sure that we merge whatever happens locally to the remote one. That's a lot of ceremony, right? But then we enter Jim Carrey mode, right? And we start coding. This is the fun part. This is what we actually want to do. So we do all our changes, we commit, we create this branch, we push that branch to our local repo, and then we can actually raise that PR, and people on that original repo is going to see that PR. Ship it, right? Well, wait a minute. Before we ship it, we should actually read these submission guidelines, because depending on the size of the project, for example, the Angular team, they have a list of things that they want you to follow. And that's, you know, just good rules. Some projects don't have it, but have a look here, because this might actually cost you a few extra hours if you don't follow these guidelines. So hopefully it's not an essay, but just a few, you know, sentences. Let's talk about maintainers. Maintainers of the repos are awesome people, right? As I said before, they're spending a lot of their free time on this. Maybe you can convince your company to contribute, or you can do so yourself. But they get so much negativity. It's not an easy thing being a core maintainer of a repo. Would you want to be a maintainer, based on what I'm saying? Probably not, right? Just feels like, hmm, I should work for free, I don't get any money, and I get negativity. That doesn't sound so good. So that's what I wanted to show you, some of the heroes of OSS. Because you don't know them. Maybe you know some of these people, right? Some of these are speakers on this conference. Maybe some of these are speakers that you've heard about. I just wanted to give them a face. I want you to realize that these are real people of flesh and blood, and they're working really, really hard for you. 
And there are so, so many more heroes. I mean, we got Camille here, right? We got Jan, who spoke yesterday. We got Mike, and we got Manfred over here. And we got Tracy, our keynote from yesterday, for example, and John. So don't ask what your OSS maintainer can do for you, but ask what you can do for your maintainer. And what I'm trying to say is, if you don't contribute on Patreon or you contribute with code, just be nice. Just reach out on Twitter and say, thank you. Are we going to do that? Thank you. Now we're coming to the end of this presentation, so I've actually got a very nice surprise, I hope. Remember how my talk title said, remember how not all heroes wear capes. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Well, today is a very different day. Today they get to wear capes. Tracy is not uh, with us today, but she was here yesterday. I believe she's going to the airport. But I would like to see Mike. Are you here? Mike Hartington of Ionic. Please enter the stage. Give an applause for Mike. Shumela Jacobs, you here? Come to the stage, please. Shumela is the founder of NG Girls, but also the creator of NG Deploy for Azure. Manfred, are you here? Please come to the stage. Michael Ladke. Michael, are you here? Not yet. Jan, are you here? Jan Niklas of RxJS core team. Woo! I believe Sebastian is on his way to the airport. Robert Vermelis of NG Girls, are you here? All right. See so many heroes? Today they are superheroes for us, right? For the rest of the day, if they want to. Heroes do wear capes today. We need to boost their egos, am I right? A little bit. There's one more thing. As a first, we are creating something called the NG OSS Award. So NG Vikings and NG Spain are joining forces to create an award that will happen every year from now on where we contribute to OSS projects. We're actually saying thank you with money. And the first winner of the NG OSS award, for me? Thank you. <laughs> the first winner of the OSS award and the recipient of 1,000 euros is actually on stage. <gasps> Drum roll. NG Girls. We hope that you, with this contribution, is able to spread your software and your knowledge to a lot of more people that needs it. And yes, we will keep doing this every year, and we hope a lot of Angular conferences out there will do this, because it's high time. Am I right? Am I right? Thank you very much, and give these superheroes a big round of applause, yeah? <laughs>